the dam above the city of Carnation, and if we have to do anything to make our citizens safe, the city of Seattle will be receiving a bill for that. And they'll be receiving a bill on an ongoing yearly basis for going forward with this, because there's a lot of things that we have to do in the city to make sure that our citizens are safe. One thing that we do and that we have done in the past with zero input from SPU in the city of Seattle is a dam safety evacuation drill. We started that before the false alarm and they have not paid minimal or nothing in years past to do that. And that's an event that we take a Saturday. It's the last Saturday in October and September. in September. And we take our citizens through and they walk from their homes up to the evacuation site so they know how to do this. Um, the best entity that has actually done this every year is Riverview School District. Riverview School District has a dam evacuation drill every year. When the first false alarm went off, the only citizens that really knew how to respond to this was the kids. The kids knew where to go and how to go. Our citizens didn't, and so that's why we decided at the time to make this a yearly event to do that. And we've got minimal or no, no support from Seattle or the city of Carnation, or the city of Seattle. You talked about the false alarms and also how the sirens may not be heard in certain buildings as well. Yeah. I mean, you talked about this in the past, but what exactly would you like from the city of Seattle? The city of Seattle needs to have a better system than the system that they just decommissioned. That was the promise made by the city of Seattle and SPU. Right now, we do not have that system in place. It's farly, if it's inadequate and is not working to anywhere near the level that it should be right now. And for those who may not be familiar with the situation, but can you really help explain you know, how traumatic this can be or has been to residents who heard the false alarms? Yeah, I can tell you the first time that it went off, we had seniors that just walked out into their yard and waited for a wall of water to come down. And they thought that they were gonna die. We had people that were in wheelchairs that sat in their room and just cried because they thought they were gonna pass away. To this day, there's people that will leave the city of Carnation at noon because they don't wanna hear those sirens go off. It is continually impacting the citizens in Carnation. It is the psychological impact that this has had um, affects everybody in here. And I know from talking to some of the affected parties that they wanna do something drastic, I, I don't know, protest, something like that. Do you think if the city doesn't take your concern seriously enough, this is going to escalate further? I think the biggest thing that the city is actually thinking about right now, in addition with the citizens, is protesting the FERC recommissioning of the dam. And if the FERC recommissioning of the dam doesn't happen, Seattle's going to lose a third of their water and over $30 million of revenue a year. Could you remind our viewers what would be at stake in terms of why you need ample warning? What would this community face if that dam did have a catastrophic breach? What would it look like? Uh, right now, we would be under 15 feet of water. So that's it. Our, our tallest building in, in, in Carnation would be under 10 feet of water. Uh, the city of Carnation would not be here. The river system would not be here. The impacts it would have on lives and of the future of this valley would be devastating. tomorrow. We've waited three years. It's time for them to step up. I, I don't know how more clear I can be on this. Um, it's three years of promises and broken promises and broken promises. And the latest broken promise is that we are going to have a better system than we had that was a 40 year old system. And right now we have a brand new state of the art system that's a complete failure. It's time to fix it and it's time to fix it tomorrow. I can't even remember. We went down and we actually, everybody on council went down and we gave our three minutes of public testimony because we asked the city of Seattle to come in and talk to them individually when they said they didn't have time. So as a council, we went down and all gave our three minutes of testimony in, the public, in public comment so that we could get our message across. So I'm hoping that the newly elected officials in the city of Seattle step up and make this a priority.